All right, in this Tobacco University video, we're gonna be investigating marijuana and the history of the OG Kush, a very famous variety uh, you might have heard of before. So while marijuana is high in THC content, that is important to note, and while this channel does focus uh, more on the hemp, uh, it's important to understand that while marijuana is, is associated with that recreational use in general, following and understanding the history of the famous OG Kush strain can provide great insight into the marijuana culture in general. And a lot of the information is spread through oral history and kind of explanations of things. So this just kind of serves as an example of that. Also, the OG Kush has become a worldwide staple used for numerous famous strains like Girl Scout cookies. And there's also many different phenotypes of the OG Kush. Uh, that exist. The following that I'm going to present here is the history of the OG Kush is based on an interview with Matt Bubba Berger, who found a bag of seed in Florida that would later become known as the OG Kush. The original interview came on the Adam Dunn show, as we can see right over here, uh, Adam Dunn right there, and I've been very fortunate to meet him both in Denver, Col Colorado, and also on the East Coast. If you want to uh, hear the interview for yourself, I've linked the YouTube uh, description there. Uh, as far as how to look it up and the link to provide if you want to look at the original interview. But here I'm going to provide a kind of summarized version. So the history of the OG Kush, just in general, looking at its original, it's originated in Orlando, Florida. And the seed came from an unknown bag of weed in Miami in 1991. Weed is, was called Crippy, which was really just a generic term for good weed. And it's the start of the generation that started naming and breeding around this time frame. Only one plant was kept and propagated from the limited amount of seeds that were present in the once original weed. And it was just called Kush, since the first batch was said to look like Kush berries. That's an important note to make that there's really no such thing as a Kush berry, but they liked the name, so it stuck and it became a pop popular in the cannabis industry. Uh, in 1996, it's made its way to Los Angeles. So while a lot of people think the OG Kush is a, a West Coast, California based uh, strain, the original seed did come from Orlando, Florida in 1991. Now, become, how it become the OG Kush here? Well, in 1988, it started to actually be called the OG Kush in an attempt to identify it as the original strain grown in Los Angeles, grown in LA there. In general, it tends to be a viney morphology and can have hormaphic didactic tendencies as well. Originally, to prevent the strain from being lost, seeds were the main form of di distribution, and this is how the OG Kush got spread across the United States. Now, looking at the OG Kush, it's a quality over quantity example here. So the Kush is generally a poor yielder in quantity. It's not going to give you, like, the example of the tomatoes over here. It's not going to give you a ton of tomatoes, but it's going to give you a high quality um, end results there. So the quality was above average, and shops in Amsterdam uh, did not want to pay any more for it originally since it was not well known. It's hard to get a premium price, even though the quality was higher in Amsterdam. However, during 1997 to 1999, in Los Angeles, California, it was getting top dollar for the Kush due to the great demand and limited supply. To give you an idea of what the price was going for around that time frame, you're looking at $500 plus per ounce, and it was sold even before it was grown. That shows you how high in demand it was. Now, Kush is very much a West Coast strain, uh, as sour diesel was dominant on the East Coast. So these kind of developed the West Coast is more OG Kush, East Coast more that sour diesel strain. Now, limited starting materials mentioned. So the Kush strain can be traced back to an original, literally few seeds that were found in an ounce of weed way back in the early 90s. Very rare for this limited starting material to become such a successful strain, but remember it is possible if you think about developing your own. There are some people who have feminized it and generated their own versions of it, but original uh, has been kept for the special unique terpene profile that it does um, possess here to, to find that true and original OG Kush. Now, past to present, and I give you that kind of like just quick summary. Um, Matt Bubba Berger has been growing the same plant propagated via clones for about 18 years up to this, up to the publication of this video. Overall, the end product is unchanged, but the leaf morpho morphology has gone from more of the traditional kind of five-fingered uh, leaves to more funky random uh, morphology 
over that many years of propagation. Yield has dropped a little bit, but over this uh, time, however, the chemical profiles remain like the original. So that's the importance of kind of clones or maintaining a strain over a long period of time. Uh, at the point of the interview here, he was growing it for 18 continuous years. And like I said, just a slight difference in plant morphology, but the key part is that chemical and terpene profile remain the same giving that OG Kush uh, the reason for why it's still around to this day is it's for its unique terpene profile and uniqueness to the market. And that's why it's still respected and known to the present day.